Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Samsung SSD 980 NVMe SSD. This is the latest version of Samsung's NVMe lineup, and it's a Gen 3 NVMe SSD drive, which is interesting for a number of reasons. Now, this is an unboxing video with installation benchmark tests and a setup process, but I've done a more in-depth video separately if you want to find out how to install it and the various different ways of doing it. I've done another separate video on the interesting parts of the speeds of your M2 slots on your motherboard as well that I'll link to in the description that I recommend checking out. But here I'm going to be focusing on the design of the card and what it's designed to do in terms of features. What's interesting about it, for example, is that it's a Gen 3 NVMe SSD drive, which is curious when everyone else is going for Gen 4, with AMD and Intel supporting PCIe Gen 4 and allowing for higher max speeds of up to 7,000 megabytes per second, for example, where this drive only goes up to 3,500 megabytes per second or 3,000 megabytes per second in write speeds. Now, the reason they've done that is because they've designed this to be more reliable and more efficient over time, offering to deliver a better longevity in terms of the speeds it offers, which is a curiosity as well. So basically, it runs faster for longer than the previous iteration and the Samsung 970 Evo, for example, and I'll show a bit more on this later on. So although it doesn't run as fast as those Gen 4 cards, it does run well, and that is worth noting, and it is a point of interest as well, and a curiosity. So that is possibly what makes it a good selling point. Now, these cards retail at £45 sterling for a 250GB version, up to £120 for the terabyte version. So it's 250GB, 500GB, and 1TB is the maximum size on it. So it's not even a huge drive either, which is a cur another curiosity, not making them larger. But they are relatively affordable, actually. That's not too expensive. But what you're getting is a drive that will last longer and give you better performance over time, which is really interesting. Now the setup process is, as usual, very straightforward. Plug it into your drive, screw it down with a screw which you do need to purchase separately, and I'll link to that in the description in case you don't have any included with your motherboard or on hand. Then boot up into Windows, click on your Manage button within Windows Explorer, and go into the Disk Management. You then get a little pop-up to initialize the disk, and basically you just need to go through the formatting process to set that up, assign it a drive label, label it up properly, and then you have access to it. So the process was set up with these NVMe drives is dead simple, and it always has been. You also have the option of downloading Samsung's Magician software, which allows you to see all the drives installed on your machine, whether they're Samsung or not. And you'll see, for example, it's got the 860, which is a standard 2.5 inch SSD drive, as well as the 980 registered in here. This software also monitors the temperature and you'll see the varying temperatures of the drives here. And that is another point that Samsung makes that I'll show a bit later. But basically the thermal characteristics means that it will actually run cooler than the 970 as well, which again delivers better performance over a longer period of time. So basically this drive is designed to run cool and well. But what I will note is that I did make a mistake with the installation process in this. You'll see from those clips in the beginning, I actually tried multiple M2 slots on my motherboard. And that's why I've done that separate video on the speeds because I was actually getting about 1,700 megabytes per second out of this initially when I first benchmarked it. And that was down to my motherboard settings and the way it splits PCIe lanes. So nothing to do with the card itself. But here you can see some data on the makeup of the drive and you'll note that it says three and a half thousand megabytes per second for a longer period of time and here you can see a demonstration of it in the graph form and i'll show you that a bit later in the actual testing and real world tests to show how that stands up but essentially what it means is under performance and under load it will transfer files back and forth swiftly so you can see some of that here i've got crystal disk mark running on the right hand side and then on the left hand side, I've got Windows Task Manager set to basically show you what's happening with the drive. And what you'll note is the little graph at the bottom shows that it's running around two gigabytes per second, which is obviously not the maximum speed. The read speed is maximum of three gigabytes per second. You can see that running down there at the bottom. But you'll see there's a very steady line on that graph where it basically keeps it going 
along all the time at the same speed. So during the test, obviously this is a benchmarking tool, but it gives you an idea of what the performance is like. It showed that it was steady. You can see from the final tests, it was coming out at about 3000 megabytes per second. It's meant to get about 3,500, but this is a pre-production sample, so it might you might get different experiences on your machine. But the point isn't necessarily the highest speed. That isn't the point. The point is that it'll keep near that higher speed for longer than the 970 Evo and for other NVMe SSDs that are Gen 3. So you can guaranteed a better performance for a longer period of time. And I think that's what makes it interesting and appealing as well. Is if you're transferring files or doing things regularly on the drive, then you will see better performance constantly from that. And that's actually really obvious when you start transferring files as well. So here I have filled up the drive with a multitude of clips that I captured while playing games. They're all about the same size. They were 144 meg each or something like that. A multitude of three minute long files captured from Rainbow Six and other games. And I'm basically transferring them from there to the 860 SSD that I have on there, which is obviously not an NVMe drive. And you can see that it initially starts off quite quick, but then when it goes about the process of reading it on the old traditional SSD drive, it slows right down. And that's because I'm transferring from an NVMe to an SSD, so it's not a slight against the 980, but it was an interesting point and I wanted to highlight because if you see the difference between that and then when I transfer the files back the other way, or onto another NVMe, which I'll show you in a second, you'll see a big difference in the way that works. So if I cut them out of the other standard hard drive, a standard SSD drive, and then paste them back into the 980, you can see you get a steady speed the whole time as it's transferring across, which is much swifter. Now if I go into my C drive, which is a WD Black SN750 drive, that's NVMe. If I copy from that one to the other there, you can see that stays at that steady speed the whole time. So you're getting a much faster speed consistently across there, going back and forth between these drives. Obviously this, if you're loading files, it does it quickly. If you're transferring files, it does it quickly as well. So really fantastic performance consistently. So there you have it, a fantastic drive, reasonably affordable, easy to install, and nice and swift too. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.